The Team Fortress 2 timeline has been home to many iconic characters. Each one made their own small impact on the world around them for good and for bad. There was one person who took on the role of a healer. His actions throughout the years however showed him in more of a sinister light. Some of these included deals with the devil and shady experimental procedures on unsuspecting patients. Where did he get his training? How important was his role on the Team Fortress team? And how did he keep his fellow mercenaries alive for so long in the Gravel War, Man vs Machine, and Classic Mercenaries vs the current ones? Here, we explore in the lore and story behind the medic in Team Fortress. We all know the tale of the Gravel War, a petty squabble between two brothers who wanted sole control of the land their father had left them in his will. The war began in 1890 as Blutarch and Redmond Mann hired their first group of mercenaries to capture the land for them. Despite their best attempts, this war soon became a stalemate as each side equally matched the other. By 1930, the war continued on. The original mercenaries soon became too old to fight and a new group was brought in. The brothers themselves also had machines built for them that were designed to keep them alive. This was the Gravel War, a conflict that would seemingly never end. In this new group of mercenaries was a combat medic. In his role of support, he listened out for the calls of his teammates that required medical attention. With a medkit, he healed them quickly. He was also faster than most of his team and with his shotguns, nail gun and grenades, he was pretty deadly. One of the medic's most effective ways to weaken a team was to begin a contagion that spread across the entire opponent's team. During his time in the Gravel War, he also learned how to passively regenerate health. With his skills, he would be an essential part of the team for years to come. Over in the city of Stuttgart, Germany, a child was born. Not a lot is known about Dr. Ludwig's early life. What is known is that he grew up during World War II in a Nazi-controlled Germany. He himself did not participate in the barbaric acts of this regime, but he did know that he wanted to be a doctor. At one point, Ludwig managed to contact the demonic realm of hell. Within, he offered his soul in return for something. At this point, whatever he received is still unknown. We can speculate that it was likely the knowledge of medicine or the extreme amount of luck he had when he performed an operation that at first would have appeared to have normally failed. Dr. Ludwig was an incredibly smart man and he knew how to get what he wanted out of those around him. This also worked with the devil. The doctor had technically sold his soul, but he would make it as difficult as he could for hell to take it from him. In the contract of this deal, Ludwig had noticed an interesting clause. In Article 9, Section 7, it stated that the contract only held up if Hell owned the majority stake in Dr. Ludwig's soul. This was a loophole that the doctor would seek to exploit. Back in Germany, Dr. Ludwig practiced medicine and honed his craft. During this period of time, there was no Hippocratic Oath to govern how he interacted with his patients. He had no compassion for the sick or any respect for human dignity. He did, however, attempt to learn as much as he could from his patients about how the human body functioned and how far he could push it. Dr. Ludwig also did not have any verifiable form of medical training, but he did manage to acquire a medical license. Although the doctor did not have any empathy for the humans around him, he did have a love for doves, one of which was Archimedes. These doves would also frequently join him in his operating theatre during surgery. After the war ended, Dr. Ludwig continued on with his experiments and pushed himself to see what his surgical skills were capable of. 
One of his most infamous procedures had him remove the whole skeleton of his patient while they slept. When the patient woke up, they found that their doctor was gone and they could not move. This procedure alone resulted in the loss of Dr. Ludwig's medical license. The theft of an entire human skeleton was a pretty evil act to commit, and in hell, the demons believed that Ludwig had got the better end of the deal that they had made. Regardless of whether Ludwig had signed this contract or not in the first place, it was clear that his actions would ultimately lead him to hell anyway. A major fascination of Ludwig's line of work was the use of exotic animals' body parts in his operations with humans. Some appeared to amplify the human and others did not. He just wanted to see what worked. One animal he seemed to focus on more than others were baboons. Exotic animals, however, were pretty expensive to come by and he had to improvise on how he acquired them. By chance, Ludwig discovered that not only could a human survive a baboon uterus transplant, but the human host could also grow at least one, two at a push. This procedure of course was against the will or sometimes knowledge of the human host, but Ludwig did what he had to do to continue his important research and work. By 1972, the mercenaries in the gravel war had retired from the conflict. The Mann brothers of course still needed mercenaries to fight for their land, so they hired a new group. This was a perfect opportunity for Dr. Ludwig. A battleground of continuous chaos was ideal for him to explore new ways to heal and experiment on a team. This was the fieldwork he had always hoped for. From this moment, he was known as the Medic. Medic was smart, incredibly talented, and had a way with words. This combination offered him the ability to form a strong friendship with the mercenaries on his team, as they allowed him to experiment on them. For years, Dr. Ludwig took his role of support extremely seriously. Some say maybe a little too seriously. He may have been a medic, but he was also a very dangerous foe to encounter, just like his predecessor. He healed his team. However, Ludwig came with more advanced equipment. His medigun sent out waves of healing energy at his target and treated their wounds extremely effectively. While doing so, he relied on the person he was healing to protect him to an extent. This was how he formed a strong relationship with Heavy. The opposing team saw how useful Medic was and attempted to take him out in order to weaken the rest of the team. Ludwig knew how to defend himself and when attacked, he often fired needles at them with his syringe gun or if an enemy got a little too brave and got too close. The Medic was shown to be pretty handy with a bone saw. Also just like his predecessor, he had also discovered a way to heal passively. Over his years in the gravel war, Dr. Ludwig was offered new weapons and technology by Manco to use in the war and in experimental procedures. Some of which were the Blutsager, the Crusader's crossbow, the Vaccinator and the Vitasaur. For whatever situation he found himself in, Ludwig had a variety of weapons to use. The gravel war was great for his field work, but it was also dangerous. If he died, his soul belonged to hell. Having built up the trust of his teammates through various procedures and adaptations over their time together, medics secretly surgically removed their souls and attached them to his. In doing this, Hell did own what was Medic's soul, but due to his work, he owned the other eight attached to it. This meant that Hell owned one ninth of the surgically adapted soul, a loophole in the contract. This would explain how the engineer, demoman, scout, spy, pyro, soldier, sniper and heavy could die continuously in the gravel war as their souls had nowhere to go. They were trapped on earth. Although Dr. Ludwig had stolen the souls of his teammates, he did also help them in the process. One of his most important procedures was first performed on heavy. 
Medic sought out a way to make his fellow mercenaries invulnerable during battle through a process called Ubercharge. Yet, the medic soon discovered that the human heart struggled to survive the charge. In his operating theatre, Medic attempted to attach an Uber battery to Heavy's heart to help him survive the process. The battery, however, overloaded even Heavy's heart, the strongest of all, and it exploded. This did not panic Dr. Ludwig at all. He instead grabbed a mega baboon heart from his fridge, added the battery to it, and placed it into Heavy's chest to replace his original heart. With the help of his medigun, all of his wounds were healed, except for a piece of rib, and Heavy was sent back out to fight. And to Medic's delight, Heavy survived the first attempted ubercharge as he activated it. With this success, Medic repeated this procedure on the rest of the mercenaries so that he could ubercharge any of them if needed. Many years before, a young demoman read a book that was not meant to be read, The Bomomicon. It had turned him into the mercenary he was today, but the book itself was sentient and it decided to haunt his eye socket. From that moment, Tavish Finnegan de Groot had to wear an eye patch to cover his lost eye. Upon meeting Medic, Tavish the Demoman asked him to restore his eye. Dr. Ludwig liked the challenge and complied with this request. Unfortunately, for the next eight years, on every Halloween night, Demoman's new eye transformed into something new. Some of which being a giant eye bat, a Dracula eye, a brain in a jar eye, and a knife wielding ventriloquist eye. Ludwig wanted to help his friend, but each time he restored his eye, the mercenaries just had to fight a new variation of Demoman's eye every Halloween. As a man of science, Dr. Ludwig cautiously accepted that Demoman's eye may be haunted, something his knowledge of science and years of experimentation could not form a sound explanation for. And to stop this annual fight, Medic decided to scoop out part of Tavish's brain to stop him from asking for his eye to be restored. Medic appeared to care about his fellow mercenaries and did what he could to help them out. He did still have a dark streak, something he showed only to those who wronged him. A prime example of this occurred one Halloween night. As the rest of the mercenaries began their Halloween celebration, Dr. Ludwig found himself in a dark alley. In here, he was attacked by a mugger, a mugger that did not know who he had just angered. Medic had his own form of justice, and after he knocked out the mugger, he brought him back to his lab. After a short procedure, with the help of Del the Engineer, Dr. Ludwig removed his attacker's brain from his skull, reanimated it, and placed it into a pumpkin. When the thief woke up, they were confused about what had happened. They could not move their limbs as they did not have any. Dr. Ludwig looked down at his beautiful creation and introduced them to their new life as a Halloween decoration. In his words, think of it as your second chance to turn your life around. The pumpkin could not do anything about this situation, and Dell simply took the pumpkin to its new spot as it began its new life. Interestingly enough, the engineer appeared unfazed by Medic's act of justice, something he was likely used to at this point. Over the years to come in the Gravel War, Medic showed himself to be one of the most essential parts of the team. He healed his teammates, fought off those who got too close, and most importantly, helped dominate in those final pushes to capture control points against waves of sentry guns, soldiers, and in general, swarms of enemies. The Gravel War eventually came to a pretty sudden end after the murders of both Blutark and Redmond Mann at the hands of their third, secret brother, Grey Man. Grey did not care for the land his brothers had fought over. He did, however, want the company his father had given away, his birthright, Manco. 
The Team Fortress mercenaries lost their jobs in the Gravel War and were quickly rehired by Saxton Hale, the CEO of Manco, to fight against Grey and the robots he had constructed to take the company for him. Dr. Ludwig once again took his role seriously as medic in this war on the team and helped destroy waves of robots, some of which were modelled after him. History repeated itself in this moment. The Team Fortress mercenaries were able to destroy the robots, but there were always more to come. And soon, another stalemate. Grey Man was much smarter than his brothers, and he managed to trick Saxon Hale out of his position of CEO, and thus, he took control of Manco. Once again, without someone to fight for, the Team Fortress mercenaries lost their jobs and they all went off on their own way. Del the Engineer went with the Administrator as she sought out hidden Australian caches, Tavish the Demo Man returned home to his mum, and the others simply decided what they wanted to do next. Part of the reason Grey had wanted control of Manco was their access to Australia. An issue later arose when he discovered that the Australium he wanted had been stolen by the Administrator, and to track her down, Grey hired the classic mercenaries. Their medic was either unavailable or he had passed away, so they hired Dr. Ludwig. This was another incredible opportunity for Ludwig, and as the months passed, he worked alongside and on the classic mercenaries. Grey Man was incredibly wealthy, and Medic took full advantage of this. Almost instantly, he spent the whole of the team's budget on black market organs from exotic animals. They had money, and he was going to spend it on what he wanted. This action frustrated the classic heavy. He also made it clear to the rest of the team that he did not want Dr. Ludwig with them. The medic was surprised that their previous medic had not experimented on them, and he decided to take full advantage of this opportunity. During what he claimed to be a simple cavity filling on Greg, Dr. Ludwig performed not one, but three baboon uterus implants. Greg was unaware of this, as was the heavy. To help in her search for the Australian caches, the administrator later asked her assistant, Miss Pauling, to assemble the team. Pauling just had to figure out where each mercenary had gone. It had been six months since the end of Man vs Machine, and while Miss Pauling was able to find Tavish the Demo Man, Mr Jane Doe the Soldier, and Pyro, she could not find Medic. Demo Man simply told her that he had got himself a fancy job. On the side of Grey Man, he ordered his classic mercenaries to track down Ludwig's friends so that they could lead him to the Administrator. Dr. Ludwig valued his friendships with the recent mercenaries over the classic ones, and he prepared for whatever came next. The classic mercenaries quickly tracked down the administrator's mercenaries in what remained of New Zealand at the bottom of the ocean. Upon their arrival, Medic smiled as he saw his old friends for the first time in a while, but this happy moment soon turned dark as the classic heavy shot Mundy and killed him. Around six hours later, within Grey Gravel Co., Ludwig knew he could bring his friend back. After hours of surgery, an injection of a blue whale's pineal gland into the brainstem, and $1.3 billion of Grey's money, Mundy woke up. Upon his resurrection, the sniper was furious. The last thing he had seen before his death was that smug, evil grin on Medic's face. Ludwig seemed upset by this comment. He explained that that was just how he smiled. He was happy to see his friend at that moment, before everything had gone bad. This was a great achievement for Dr. Ludwig. He had brought back a friend from the dead. Yet, the classic Heavy did not share his optimism. The Heavy had shot him because he wanted him dead. 
during this operation. The Heavy had taken control of this entire operation from Grey Man after he learned that Grey had used an immortality device to stay alive, something he wanted to use for himself and valued more than what he was being paid. Ludwig explained that every doctor needed a cadaver or two for their experiments. It was not his fault, he was too good at his job. The medic's smug attitude angered the heavy, and in response, he crushed Archimedes as the bird sat on his shoulder. Ludwig once again performed the impossible and brought his bird back. In this chaotic moment, the classic heavy received a phone call from his team. He was told that Ludwig's mercenary friends had killed three of the classic mercenaries. The medic became excited about the possibility of field work, but the heavy responded with, I need mercs out there, not nurses. He instead ordered the medic to kill the sniper he had brought back. As the heavy went off to help his team, Ludwig plotted his revenge. Moments later, the classic heavy unleashed an army of blood-sucking robots to take out the mercenaries that had killed his friends. In theory, this should have killed them, but as their souls had been stolen by Dr. Ludwig long before, the medic was able to use his underwear to sponge up as much blood as he could to return it to their bodies. Their blood types would have normally been an issue, but contamination may have also been a concern. Once again, the classic heavy sent out more robots to fight the mercenaries that would just not die. Outside of the conflict, he ordered Dr. Ludwig to install an immortality device he had ripped from Grey Man. This was Ludwig's moment for revenge, and he took it. In a swift motion, the medic slashed at the classic heavy's face with his bone saw. Enraged, the heavy charged at the medic, but Ludwig was quick, and he plunged the entirety of his saw into his opponent. This should have been enough to take down the giant, but it was not. Out of options to defend himself, Dr. Ludwig was pinned to the ground. He pleaded that the heavy needed him. He was the only one that could install the immortality device. The heavy, however, instead believed that when he found the administrator, she would help him install it. To Dr. Ludwig's luck, his heavy had discovered his location, and with his minigun in hand, he ordered the classic heavy to not hit Dr. It appeared that his friend had saved him, yet, as the classic heavy stood up, he shot Ludwig twice and everything faded to black and then orange as the fires of hell raged around him. It had been a long time since Dr. Ludwig had signed his initial contract with hell, and here he sat, across from the devil. A deal was a deal and the devil believed that all the paperwork should be in order for Ludwig to begin eternal torment in hell. As planned, the medic pointed to Article 9, Section 7 of the contract. Hell no longer owned the majority share of his soul, he did. Ludwig explained that Hell had once owned the majority, but he had surgically added eight more, but he could offer a vote to see where his soul went. In this vote, Ludwig opted to be sent to heaven, while the devil opted for Ludwig to be sent to hell. As the devil only owned one ninth of the shares of Ludwig's soul, and Ludwig owned the other eight, the medic won. This enraged the devil. He shouted that he would not be denied. To take advantage of this situation, Ludwig suggested that if the devil were to send him back to earth for say, another 50 years, he was surely smart enough to trick him out of the other 8 souls. As the smartest person in the room, Ludwig fed into the ego of the devil and even offered him one whole soul for a pen. The devil, unaware of how smart this medic was, fell right into his hands and gave him what he asked for. Then Dr. Ludwig opened his eyes, and he was back. The resurrection of Dr. Ludwig stopped the conflict between both heavies. Classic Heavy was confused. 
How could he be alive? In this moment of bewilderment, Ludwig ignored his questions. He instead looked down at the pen he had taken from hell and told the heavy that it was an inducer, a device that, upon activation, would trigger the labour of at least three fully developed baby baboons in the classic heavy's abdomen. Ludwig had implanted three uteruses in the heavy, but this pen was not an inducer. This however did stall the situation enough for Ludwig's heavy to rip a poorly attached immortality device from the brute. To finish off the person that had crushed Archimedes, Dr. Ludwig then reached for his real inducer and activated it as baby baboons came from the classic heavy's abdomen. The perfect revenge against the person that had fought with his favourite mercenary and crushed his pet bird, Archimedes. Throughout his life, Dr. Ludwig had shown his sadistic side in the pursuit of science. His need to explore how the human body functioned and how it could be adapted was viewed by many as evil and cruel. The medic did, however, care for a few select people in his life. His deal with the devil did save him from eternity in hell, but it also saved his fellow mercenaries from permanent death. He knew he could bring them back, even if it did cost over a billion dollars. Overall, Dr. Ludwig did everything in his power to help out his team and after the defeat of the classic mercenaries and their robots, the fate of the medic and the rest of the team is unknown. Coming soon in the seventh comic book in the Team Fortress series, hopefully we will find out. As an engineer main, I absolutely hate that feeling you get when you see a heavy medic combo on the way to destroy your sentry, especially in the final 10 seconds of Dust Bowl when you've done everything you can to protect the control point. The Medic is a great character with a great backstory. He is probably one of my least played mercenaries, but I do love his story, that he grew to appreciate the team around him. My final point I want to say really is that the next Team Fortress comic coming out soon has been a bit of a meme, similar to Half-Life 3. Yet this issue could give us more of an insight into what the medic's deal actually was with the devil. Personally, I believe it has to be his incredible luck and surgical skills. His relationship with the heavy could also be explored more. I've seen the theories. That was everything I wanted to say really, so this was the lore and story behind the medic in Team Fortress 2. If you enjoyed this, then please leave a like, drop a comment below, and even share it with another Team Fortress fan. If you disagreed or genuinely disliked this, then also let me know in the comments below and leave a dislike. I appreciate you watching the video, regardless of how you felt about it. Subscribe for more content too. As usual, I would like to thank my amazing gold tier patrons and channel members who got access to this video a little bit early. Jonas, Lewis, Queen Arby, Fluffy the Dragon, Chicken Guy 791, Ruben Mendoza, Duke, Toadnut, Oren X, Azu, Karatana, AJ, Verona, Comfy, BG Games, Apravis, and Arnis. Now, what did you think of this lore? Do you normally play as the medic, and what do you think his deal was with the devil? This is where our story ends. Check back next week for a new one.